Good afternoon, everyone. This is Kimberly Joy, and I'm about to record for my radio show, The Kimberly Joy Show, in just a moment. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kimberly Joy, and I thank you for tuning in to The Kimberly Joy Show. I am truly grateful to God for another opportunity to share an inspiring message with you. But before I share today's message, I have a special announcement. The Young Adult Ministry of Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church invites you and your family to their first annual Rebuild, Uplift, Educate project on Saturday, September 30th, 2017, beginning at 12 noon. The theme is bringing the community together. There will be food, including fish dinners, funnel cakes, candy apples, and CC sweets. Health screenings will also be provided. Some of the vendors include CareSource and Fortis College. Activities will be available for the children as well. Then at 2 p.m., they're having a gospel concert featuring such artists as Speak Life, Pastor Wayman Dean, Sherry Ty, Inspirational Baptist Church's Camp Inc. Mind Ministry, and the Mount Moriah Prophetic Mind Ministry. The location is 1169 Simmons Street, Lincoln Heights, Ohio, 45215. Jamal F. Pickens Sr. is the pastor. And so I encourage you to check out this special event on Saturday. In fact, it is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday, September 30th. I definitely plan to be there. My personal motto is, know yourself, be yourself, love yourself. Knowing who you and I are in God, being who we are with no apologies, and loving who we are wholeheartedly includes being mindful of the words we speak. When God created man, he created him in his own image and likeness. As a result, as humans, we are empowered to speak with authority. In fact, when we look at the first man, Adam, his first recorded assignment in the Bible was to name each animal God had created. Now that was a big important assignment when you think about it. God entrusted Adam to give each animal its own unique name. Just like Adam, as children of God, we are entrusted to use our words to make a positive impact. It makes me think about the Apostle Paul. In Philippians 3 and 1, he explains that he never gets tired of telling the people about Jesus and encouraging them to remain faithful to God. And just like Paul, we are to use our voices to, to tell others about Jesus. We are to use our words to pray and encourage someone. Unfortunately, some, and, and I'm talking about believers in Christ, Christians, some choose to use their words in a negative way. I've been in church all my life, and so I've witnessed church folks say some really cruel things about others, including other believers, and I've been guilty of it myself. If we were to be honest, We've used our words to judge others, to, to criticize other people, to ridicule them, to belittle them, to backbite, to gossip. Basically, we've used our words to tear down and hate on other people. And why? Why do some of us do that? We, we who are supposed to show the love of God. Well, for one, it's a learned behavior. Yes, we model what we see and hear especially as children, because more than likely we don't know any better. Then even after we grow up and, and we mature and gain some knowledge and understanding, we still use our words in a negative way. Why? Because it feels good to the flesh. Oh yes, it, feel good, it feels good to the flesh to criticize and judge other people. See, if I can harp on someone else's faults or, or, or what I think, are someone else's faults, then I can ignore my own faults and, and basically just pretend I don't have any. If I magnify someone else's so-called issues, then I can convince myself that, well, my issues aren't as bad as theirs. Plus, some of us have a tendency to make excuses for our behavior. Here's an example. Well, we, we need to talk about this so, so we know what to pray about. Huh. Here's another example. Hey, sis, how you doing? Oh, girl, I'm blessed and highly favored. Yeah, I was just calling you because I got, 
I got some information to share with you. Yeah, you know, uh, so 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 you can pray. Hmm. And then here's another one. Look, I'm just keeping it real. I'm not gonna bite my tongue because the devil needs to be exposed. <laughs> Tell me, do any of those statements sound remotely familiar? The problem with the examples I just gave is the motive behind the statements. There's no love. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you're guilty of using your words in a negative way that you don't possess love, that, that you don't love other people. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I am suggesting is that every believer must learn how to tame his or her tongue. As humans, it's easy to lean towards what's negative, what's bad, what's evil. Why? Because although we have given our lives to Jesus, we are still in this flesh. And there's nothing holy, nothing righteous about the flesh. That's why Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 and 17 say, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify, excuse me, gratify the desires of the flesh. 17. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. In other words, in order to not give in to the flesh or the sinful nature, we must be guided by the Holy Spirit. And in order to be guided by the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, we must spend time with God, spend time with him in prayer, praising him, worshiping him, studying his word, obeying his word. We speak what's in our hearts. Luke 6 and 45 says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. If you find yourself talking negatively about someone, check your heart. Do what I like to call a self-evaluation. Ask yourself, why am I saying these things? What, what's really going on with me? And be honest with yourself. And then change your thinking, change your words. Either turn that negative statement into a positive one or just don't say anything at all and just pray about that person or situation. Although the tongue is capable of causing great harm, as children of God, we are responsible for taming it. We must be mindful of the words we speak on a daily basis. God expects us to be witnesses for Jesus Christ, not just when we share the gospel, but, be, but by being examples of love and righteousness. Remember, people watch what we do and they listen to what we say. God is holding you and me responsible. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's broadcast. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. Next week, we will finish up the topic on the power of words. If you haven't been saved by accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you can be saved today. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Please repeat this prayer. Dear Jesus, I come to you confessing I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe you shed your blood on the cross and died for my sins. I believed you were buried and rose again so I could be free. Please forgive me for my sins and the life I have lived. I confess you, Jesus, as Lord and accept you as my own personal Savior. According to the word of God, I am now saved. Hallelujah, I am free. And that's it. And I now welcome you to the family of God. If you don't have a church home, I encourage you to find a good Bible-believing church that will help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. Now, you are more than welcome to visit our church, Power and Faith Ministries, where Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks are the pastors. Our address is 7044 Fairfield Business Lane, Fairfield, Ohio, 45014. Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday service, 10 a.m. And Wednesday Bible study, 7 p.m. If you have any questions, comments, prayer requests, please email me at Kim underscore joy 73 at yahoo.com. For daily inspiration, follow the Kimberly Joy Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
and I invite you to visit my blog at thekimberlyjoy.com. My motto is know yourself, be yourself, love yourself. Please remember, Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church's Young Adult Ministry is having their first annual Rebuild, Uplift, Educate project tomorrow, Saturday, September 30th at 12 p.m. There will be food, health screenings, children's activities, and a gospel concert beginning at 2 p.m. featuring well-known artists from the tri-state area. The address is 1169 Simmons Street in Lincoln Heights. The theme is bringing the community together. So let's come together tomorrow as we fellowship, praise, and gain some valuable information. And now, here's commission from the, from the year 1988, singing, Lord Jesus, help me to help somebody else. <laughs>